Hi there class, this is my video for lesson 49. In this lesson we're going to do uh, surface area, learn about surface area. This is one of those types of problems that you probably will hate just because it sometimes takes a couple steps. You know, it's not straightforward. It's not this number times this number where you calculate it, get an answer quickly. Um, it isn't bad. It's all concepts we already know. It's just making sure we count all of our sides, calculate the square area for every side, and add them up. But that does take a few steps. Okay, so let's start here looking at um, my what looks to be sort of like a shoebox. Okay, and remember that um, we can calculate surface area in this way for some for these things called right solids. Remember that a right solid has a um, a height, okay, or dimension. It's that's at a right angle to its base. Okay, so this forms a right angle right here. Um, so does this here. And, and I use the example of like a, like a Chinese food container. It looks kind of like that, okay? Uh, this does not form a right angle with the base, and so that's not a right solid, okay? Uh, we're talking about right solids, so let's look at our first one, which is in the shape of a shoebox, more or less. Um, now, what we're going to do, what surface area means, is we want the square area of the, all of the front faces of the shoebox, okay? Let me number them for you. There's Think about a cereal box. How many sides does it have? Okay, if you were to, I said, draw a heart on every side of a, of a cereal box, you go bottom and top, or top and bottom. Okay, we can't really see that one. It's down there. Um, then we have, our, we have our two ends, and we have our four sides. All right, these are the ones we can see. And then the ones that we can't see but are implied by this figure are five there, and then six would be kind of underneath, right? That would be our bottom. Um, and so um, we have, let's see, I'm going to circle my dimensions because I went ahead and used red. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, these are my dimensions of my shape. Um, so what I need to do here is I know for a shoebox or any kind of um, rectangular solid like a cereal box, I have two ends. And we know that they're going to be the same size. So when I calculate this problem and I calculate end number one, I just multiply that by two to get the square area of end number two. Then I have my four sides. Well, um, they're not always all four the same, but it just so happens because my end is a square, all four of my sides are going to be the same size. For example, in a cereal box, you have a uh, two sides that are the same and then you you have the narrow end of the cereal box those are those are different so you have two and two here all four of my sides are going to be the same dimension so in this example i'm going to calculate the square area for uh, end number one and end number two all right so end number one remember that the formula for the area of a square or rectangle is side times side Okay, for this n number 1, it's going to be 5 times 5, and that's 25. Oops. And then I need to multiply that by 2 for, for both ends. Step 2, I need to calculate the square area for each of my sides. Okay, so again, I need, for my sides, I need side times side, and that's the dimension of one, um, one, one arm of my side, let's say kind of confusing to say si the sides of my sides, but let's look at this. Okay, we know this is 5, right, because this is a square and all the sides are the same, and then I have my bottom side there is 8. So for side number 4, my square area is 5 times 8, and that's 40, and I multiply that by 4 because I have 4 sides. I have I have two ends, right, two ends and four sides. So let's calculate that. 25 times 2 is 50. 40 times 4 is 160. And I end up with a grand total of 210. And I don't know, let's say my, my units are in inches. That's square inches because it's area. Area. So it's square area. Okay? So this is how you work these problems. You calculate the ends. Each end, or you calculate, I'm sorry, you calculate one end, multiply it by two, calculate a side, 
and multiply it by 4 if they're all the same size. If you have something in the shape of a shoebox that looks like more like this, right? Let's see. I think you know where I'm going with this. Wow. Let me fix that. Sure, you're so tired of my lousy drawings by now. Okay, that's more like a cereal box. Okay, in the cereal box example, you're going to have the two ends that are the same, um, and then you'll have, you know, um, you'll have side three and side four underneath there. That's those are the same, and then you'll have um, side five and side six, and those are the same. All right. Um, that's when your end is in a rectangle, and mine happened to be a square over here in my shoebox. Okay, so let's look at the the um, the uh, triangular um, right solid here. Okay, using the same approach, I have now this is a triangle, so I don't have four sides. I have my ends again. I have end number one and end number two. Those are going to be the same dimensions. And I have, I have, let's think about this. I have this side, I have that side, and then I have another side that's the bottom of the figure. Can you kind of visualize that? Okay. Um, and I'm going to circle my dimensions. My dimensions were 6, the 12, the 9, and the 8. Right, those are dimensions. The other numbers I'm pointing to the sides, okay? All right, so here we may have to actually calculate each of the sides separately, each of the three sides. The ends will for sure be the same. End number one and end number two will have the same square area. So let's start with that. Remembering that the uh, formula for the area of a triangle is one half base times height. I look at my figure there, my figure number one, it's going to be 1 half times 6 times 8. And then I'm going to put parentheses around it and multiply it by 2 um, for each end, for end number 1 and number 2. Now, I think I'm going to have to calculate the other three all separately. Okay? Um, so let's look at, now these sides are not triangles. The ends are triangles, but my sides are rectangles, if you notice. Okay? So let's look at my top here, side number three. I see that, okay, this edge is nine, and this side here is 12, right? So I have nine times 12. Uh, and then let's look at side number five. Let's see. Uh, this distance is 12. Um, picture underneath there. So this is going to be one edge. And this is going to be one edge. Picture underneath there. That's going to be one edge. So it's going to be 12 times, it's going to be 8 times 12. <clears throat> and then my last side, that's side number 5. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is side number 5. And this here is side number three. And now I'm going to do four. I didn't quite do them in order. Sorry. Let's see what that is. I see that one edge is 12. And my other edge is going to be here. It's going to be six. If you picture the back of this figure, it's six times 12. So that was correct. Each of the sides are different. They're all different. Okay? So now I just have to multiply those out and add them up. All right? So I would say the rectangular solid is easier than the triangular solid, but um, we're going to persevere. I know you're all going to persevere. Let's think of our times tables here. We've got another 12. What's 9 times 12? Is that 108? Right? 8 times 12, I believe, is 96. 6 times 12, I believe, is 72. All right. Let's go back up and calculate our ends. Um, 
6 times 8 is 48, times a half, half of 48 is 24, uh, times 2, and that's 48. So we kind of took 48, cut it in half, and multiplied it by 2 again. All right, and then I have 108, 96. I'm going to line these up and add them up. It's just easiest. There's four larger numbers. Let's see, 8 and 8 is 16, 22, 24. Put down my 4, carry the 2. Uh, 2 and 4 is 6, and 9 is 15, and 7 is 22. Carry my 2, 3, 24. All right. So after a little bit of messy calculating, my square, my surface area for this triangular solid is 324 inches squared. All right, we had be careful with the triangular uh, solids. Okay, if all the sides of the triangle have different dimensions, then your three sides are all going to be different square areas, like mine were. Okay, if for example um, you look at a figure like this. And let's say um, let's say that uh, you had two sides that happen to be the same. Well, then you're going to have two of your sides will be the same, and the top one will be different. You know, your hypotenuse here. It's called hypotenuse. Um, so just be careful uh, when you're calculating the triangular solid. It may be it's a little bit harder to visualize um, the sides, the dimensions of the sides. Um, but just maybe come back and, and look at this. This was awful sloppy, and I apologize. Um, I'm just going to quickly. Sometimes there's just too many numbers and things. Okay. So what I meant to say is, let's say I have um, 6, 6, and 8. And I make that my rectangular solid. Right? And this is 10. So if you can picture the bottom under there, its sides are going to be this times that. That's We'll call this um, let's see, side number one, side number two, which is back here. It's the back. And side number three is going to be the bottom, right? So side number three is 6 times 10. And this figure, um, side number one, is, is 8 times 10. And then side number two over there in the back, okay, that, um, that's going to be, this is also 10. So it's 10 times 6. So if you see that, we have 2, 6 times 10 two of them. All right, so um, this can get a little awkward, you know, try to visualize it. It takes a little visualizing. Maybe you could even fold up a piece of paper and make um, a 3D one yourself to, to look at it, just, you know, just like you look at a cereal box to get an idea what I mean. Um, maybe you could try, uh, you know, get a block of cheese and cut it into a triangular solid or something, and then we'll give you a better visual of what I mean when you, uh, or trying to calculate the sides. Okay? All right. That, just just be, just really try hard to be patient through those. You can do these. It's just square area. Just persevere through. I know it takes probably, you know, take a few minutes to do those problems. There's one last thing I want to do really quickly. Um, there was a problem on the test. I used Justin for a gauge. Sorry, Justin. Um, sometimes if he struggles with a problem, I... I, I think maybe more than one person will struggle, so I'm just going to review this. If you had something that said, for example, I'm only going to do part of a problem, right? Let's say that Sophia, uh, that she can she can mold eight paper mache Santas. For heaven's sake, I don't think I spell mache right. Uh, and she can do that in six hours. Um, give me the two rates that are implied by this statement. Give me, okay, so give me the two rates. Now I know if I tell you, um, if I tell you I need two rates, I need, and this, you know, 
that I, I think you can figure it out. But, but I think if you read it this way, and if they say to you, give me the two rates that are implied by the statement, that might confuse you a little. So remember that a rate, it always has a fraction bar. There's always going to be two of them, okay? So, and there's going to be a number on top and a number on the bottom. So we have to pull the numbers out of here and make our two rates. It's going to be something per something, right? Um, usually it's time, but not always. It can be money. Um, so she can do eight Santas in six hours. If we can write one, oh, we're, we're done. We're home free. We just flip it and write the other one. So the other rate that's implied by this statement is in six hours, she can do eight Santas. She can do eight Santas in six hours. In six hours, she can do eight Santas. It's virtually identical information, all right, uh, stated two different ways. It's important to know that because you have to get past that hump to be able to work those problems. That's all I want to say about, about rates. Okay, guys, um, that's it for Lesson uh, 49. I'll be posting Lesson 50 tomorrow. Signing off.